Hi friends, I welcome you all to another video from Curious Vet. Today we will see mammary tumors in dogs and cats. So in this video we will discuss about the etiology, a brief overview of mammary tumors in dogs and cats. Then the diagnosis options, treatment and prognosis. So tumors arising from mammary tissue are commonly observed in older intact female dogs and cats. A mammary tumor is usually suspected on detection of a mass during physical examination in the caudal abdominal glands in dogs and cranial thoracic mammary glands in cats. Here you can see pictorial representation of different glands. The dog is by far the most frequently affected domestic species and approximately 50% of all tumors in the bitch are mammary tumors. There are differences in both biology, behavior and histology of mammary tumors in dogs and cats. Approximately 45% of mammary tumors are malignant in dogs whereas Roughly 90% are malignant in cats, but dogs have a much higher number of complex and mixed tumors than do cats. Now let's see the etiology of mammary tumors. There can be different factors involved. One is hormones, uh, which play an important role in the hyperplasia and neoplasia, but the exact mechanism is unknown. But estrogen or progesterone receptors or both have been reported in mammary tumors in cells and they influence the pathogenesis of hormone-induced mammary neoplasia. And some in some experimental cases in mice, some oncona virus is caused to and uh, the genetic factors can be BRCA1 and 2 genes associated with canine and mammary tumors and nutritional and obesity factors are also involved. Obesity at one year of age and a year before the diagnosis associated with increased risk of mammary gland tumors in intact of or over hysterectomized dogs. All mammary tumors should be regarded as potentially malignant regardless of the size or number of glands involved and spread of mammary carcinomas in both dogs and cats is primarily to regional lymph nodes and lungs. So in this picture you can see the metastasis to lungs in a, a, a canine mammary gland carcinoma. In dogs, 5 to 10 percentage of mammary carcinomas may produce skeletal metastasis as well and primarily in the axial skeleton but also in long bones. Now we will see a brief overview of the canine mammary tumors. Dog is by far the most frequently affected domestic species and mammary tumors in dogs are most frequent in intact bitches and as we told before, approximately 50% of all tumors in the bitch are mammary tumors and they are extremely rare in male dogs and rare in other species as well. An ovarectomy before the first estrus reduces the risk of mammary neoplasia to 0.5% of the risk and after one estrus reduces the risk to 8%. Bitches neutered after maturity have generally been considered to have the same risk as intact bitches. But a systemic, uh, systematic review of literature based on co-trained guidelines found that the association between the age it's paying and the risk of mammary neoplasia are weak and any potential benefit in reduced risk of mammary neoplasia may be overcome by increase in the other cancer risk like lymphoma, hemangiosarcoma, osteosarcoma associated with early age ovarectomy when performed on a patient less than 2 years of age in certain breeds of dogs. The posterior two mammary glands are involved more often than the three anterior gland and grossly tumor appears as a single or multiple nodules in one or more glands and the cut surface usually lobulated with gray tan and firm filled with fluid cysts 
and mixed mammary tumors may contain mm, grow, like grossly recognizable bones or cartilage on the cut surface and more than 50 percentage of canine mammary tumors are mixed tumors benign mixed tumors and a smaller percentage of malignant mixed tumors as well in the later uh, the epithelial or mesenchymal components either singly or in combination may produce metastasis and histologically canine mammary gland tumors may be classified by world health organization who as carcinomas with six types and additional subtypes sarcomas four types car carcinosarcomas, mixed mammary tumors, and benign adenomas. And there is a system called TNM systems, and the classification scheme is based on the extent of tumor, uh, involvement of lymph nodes, and present of, um, presence of metastatic lesions. It includes unclassified uh, tumors and apparently benign dysplasias in addition to tumor size and status and timing of nutrients special stains uh, may have prognostic value. Now we will see a brief overview about feline mammary tumors. They are most common in older like 11 year old or more intact females and cats paid before six months or 12 months of age have a 91 percentage or 86 percentage reduction respectively in the risk of mammary carcinoma development compared to intact cats so 91 and 86 percentage before six and 12 months pay. so um, parity does not affect the feline mammary carcinoma development unlike in dogs in cats the two anterior or thoracic glands are the more frequently involved than the posterior gland, whereas in dogs, the who usually involved is posterior or the caudal glands. Approximately 90% of mammary tumors are malignant in cats, and cats have fewer complex and mixed tumors than dogs. Most feline mammary tumors are adenocarcinomas with tubular or papillary types more common than solid or mucoid types. Mixed mammary tumors and sarcomas are less commonly diagnosed than carcinomas. Benign tumors of feline mammary gland are relatively infrequent, usually most of them are malignant, and TNM clinical staging system is used for mammary tumors in cats as well as in dogs. So there is another condition called feline mammary hypertrophy. It affects which affects the primarily young actively cycling or pregnant cats. It is also seen in neutered cats including older males given exogenous progestational drugs. The disorder is marked clinically by rapid growth of one or more mammary glands and this is a different entity from feline mammary tumors it is called feline mammary hypertrophy now well, let's see the diagnosis of feline, uh, feline and canine mammary tumors histopathology of biopsy tissue or fine needle aspirates is the most important part in diagnosis a mammary tumor is usually suspected on detection of a mass during physical examination and the length of time the mass has been uh, present is uh, usually unknown Palpation of regional lymph nodes can help determine the extent of spread and thoracic radiograph, preferably three views, a ventrodosal and two lateral views should be taken to detect uh, if any pulmonary metastasis is there. So about the fine needle aspirate, there is a Robinson grading system to evaluate the 
hyper cellularity variable size and shape that is pleomorphism and isocytosis and macrocytosis variable nuclear size and shape increased nuclear to cytoplasmic ratio large prominent multiple nucleoli chromatin clearing chromatin clumping and presence of abnormal multinucleated cells and mitotic figures FNA results interpreted, that is finite last results interpreted to be malignant but found to strongly agree with histopathologic results. That is 66.7 percentage agreement for grade 1, 84.6 for grade 2 and 100 percentage for grade 3. Ultrasonography can be used as well and B mode and Doppler ultrasonography of neoplastic mammary tissue have only moderate sensitivity and specificity to predict malignancy. Usually quantitative acoustic radiation force impulse el elastography. A difference in the deformity and shear velocity of malignant benign tumors is observed with increased shear velocity in the malignant tumors. Here you can see a picture of ultrasonography in a cystic. Uh, that uh, in a tumor, mammary tumor, can I? Then coming to the treatment, surgical removal is the primary treatment. Chemotherapy has not been shown to be effective as an adjunct. So coming to the surgical removal, uh, mammary tumors are treated surgically although there is no consensus as to the best procedure and there can be removal uh, removal of tumor alone called lumpectomy and removal of the affected gland only simple mastectomy then modified radical mastectomy removal of the affected glands and the lymphatic drainage and associated lymph nodes and radical mastectomy where the entire mammary chain is removed with the associated lymph nodes and there is adjunct chemotherapy the use of anti-cancer drugs to combat the metastatic disease that is a re reasonable consideration but chemotherapy alone has not been shown to be an effective treatment for mammary tumors in dogs and part of the difficulty of evaluating the response to adjunct therapy relates to the fact that only about half of canine mammary tumors diagnosed as malignant on histopathologic examination actually behave that way. Yes, it is diagnosed as malignant in the histopathologic examination, but they sometimes only 50% behave as malignant. Cyclooxygenase inhibitors like Daracoxib has been shown to exert anti-angiogenic and anti-tumor activities on many types of malignant tumors. A synergistic effect has been described when treating human breast cancers with Daracoxib and doxorubicin in vitro. Daracoxib strongly potentiate doxorubicin, causing G0, G1 arrest in the cycle cell progress, progression and increases the induction of apoptosis. Daracoxib also enhances the antiproliferative effect of doxorubicin by modulation of BCL2 expression. A combination of doxorubicin and cyclophosphamide has been used with limited efficacy in cats. Neither radiation therapy nor anti-estrogenic compounds have been effective in cats. Use of NSAIs like peroxicam 0.3 mg per kilogram per day as a single agent has been beneficial in treating the inflammatory mammary carcinoma that is another subtype of mammary tumors in dogs very difficult to manage by surgical or medical means and this is in step with current interest in metronomic low dose therapy in other malignancies of anti-tumor and anti-angiogenic effect. Now let's see the prognosis. Prognosis is actually based on multiple factors. In dogs, most mammary tumors that are going to cause death do so within one year. Sarcomas are associated with shorter survival time than carcinomas. Other factors including the size of tumors, lymph node involvement and nuclear differentiation also affect the prognosis. In cats, tumor size is important. 
Cats with tumors more than 3 cm in diameter have a median survival time of 6 months, but the cats with tumors less than 2 cm in diameter have a median survival time of approximately more than 4 years. So now let's see the key points. Current dogma is that pre prepubertal ovarectomy or over a hysterectomy will reduce the lifetime risk of mammary neoplasia in dogs. It is reducing to 0.8 percentage before the first test, sorry, 0.5 percentage and to 8 percentage uh, uh, after the first test. However, a systematic review of literature based on caution and guidelines found that the association between the aged spaying and the risk of mammary neoplasia is weak. And is it, it is important that prepubertal gonad removal increases the uh, increase the lifetime risk of other cancers. So, and uh, so we have to find it a proper diagnosis treatment plan uh, and discuss the client with the most realistic prognosis. So that's all about.